All right, so Mississippi State prep. Um, these guys played really good the other night, as you saw. Um, had a chance to beat Georgia, and um, you know probably would have if Georgia wouldn't have had the new quarterback. So um, these guys have played really well on defense for most of the season. Give you a lot of problems. They play really hard. Really good players. Um, they got back on track offensively. Uh, you know, for some. You know, really good Georgia defense. So, um, you know, we're going to have our hands full. And, you know, they kind of got turned around, looked like they weren't playing great the, the few games before that, especially offensively. And then um, they got it turned around and, um, you know, beat some drop eight, which I think had been, um, you know, their issues lately. So, and even without all that, it wouldn't have mattered because rivalry games, you know, you never know what's going to happen. John Sokol, I'll start us off. How's it going, Lane? Good. Um, just wanted to know kind of what you, to the extent that you knew of like the rivalry of the Egg Bowl before you got here, um, based on like who you talked to, what you can kind of like expect for uh, for this specific rivalry and just like your thoughts on it. Well, <clears throat> I'd known about it you know, just from watching. I think, you know, you used to be on Thanksgiving a lot and then um, – you know, my brother being here for a number of years, so um, <clears throat> knew it was always really competitive and a big deal around here. And so, um, you know, it's a big deal. Go to Parrish. Playing with, uh, with Otis having set out uh, so much of the season, what, what is a reasonable expectation for him uh, to be able to contribute in the game? Well, I think a lot. Um, even though he's set out, he still practices all the time. He's in great shape. You know, he's a great practice player. So he was always preparing like he was playing. Um, so I would anticipate him playing a lot. I know earlier in the season you were concerned about do you rep him as a starter or not. How did you manage that for him through the season? Well, we hadn't. You know, once, <clears throat> you know, they said, you know, he'd lost whatever it was that <clears> – <throat> You know, we, we couldn't afford to use those reps. So um, he's been down on service team. He actually started this week playing receiver on service to help us over there because we were down numbers, um, you know, until we found out. Good to Joe. Hey, how you doing, man? Joe Cook. Good. Team W, APT, and Jackson. Um, I just wanted to get what do you think the time off that you've had? helps in the situation going into a rivalry game, especially for you uh, coming in, uh, you know, in your first year? Or does it not help you because you guys have been playing so well as a player? No, I mean, I would rather not have it, you know, when you're in rhythm and, and playing well and, you know, won a couple games in a row. So um, it is what it is. Hopefully we used it to get better at some things. And, um, you know, blessing with Otis, you know, um, you know, being able to play. You know, where you know, had we played, he wouldn't be able to play, so that was good. Good to John Zetter. Yeah, Lane, I know you've probably been asked this before, but what makes Elijah so so good um, to put up those kind of numbers the last two seasons, not just now? Well, he's a great player, first off, but you know, he prepares really well, um, very smart player, so you know, a lot of players wouldn't be able to line up outside, inside, and in the backfield all the first series of the game. So, um, you know, he's a true professional. Did, did you did you see, I know you weren't there, but did you see the way last year's game ended and did you address that to him? Try not to, keep, to, to not keep that on his mind, to get any advice for him? No, I think that was a long time ago. I talked to him when I first got here about that, you know, and learning and moving forward. So I don't think there was any need to. Um, you know, that, that was a long time ago, a lot of catches ago. Go to Nick. Lynn, I know State's been having some numbers issues the last couple of weeks. Have there been any conversations about their status, or is everything good to go from what you've heard? Uh, we have not heard anything. Um, so, fortunately, our guys did a good job. Um, you know, over the weekend, even though we didn't play, we kept them around. And uh, yesterday, we were 100%. So, hopefully, we keep that up. How do you plan on handling the holiday with, with that sort of stuff? Well, we don't really, you know, we're a morning format practice, so we don't change our schedule. You know, when you're in the afternoon, a lot of times you got to move it up. Um, so we, we just go go like normal. And so, 
you know, they'll stay here, um, except for, you know, kids that could get, you know, that are really close because, you know, we we got Thursday to work and then they're back here Friday morning. Nate, go ahead. But with, with State, I mean, they played probably the best game they played in two months this past week with those 40 some players. What they do differently, especially offensively, to kind of get rolling against a good defense? Yeah, I mean, they were patient. They checked the ball down a lot. Um, you know, Georgia copied everybody's blueprint, you know, drop eight and keep the ball in front of them. And I think when you do that, you know, they were thinking they'd screw it up or they'd, you know, force the ball and, and have some turnovers, you know, which they had at times this year. And, uh, you know, they played a really clean game with no turnovers. We'll go to Neil. Hey, Lane, I know you focused on Mississippi State this week. I was just curious if you had heard anything or been told anything about when the Texas A&M game would be made up or if games would get shuffled after this week. Yeah, I've not heard anything. You know, we're just focused on this one and who's ever next will be next after that. We'll go back to Parrish. Lane, uh, in your conversations with Elijah when you got here, did you have to convince him to stay? Was he considering leaving the program based on uh, how last season finished for him? I don't think so. I'd never heard anything about that. Um, I think, you know, before we were hired, talking to Keith, there was a lot of, you know, kids saying they were leaving, whatever. But um, I think, I think everybody stayed actually. So, uh, no, I didn't. John, go ahead. Lane, you mentioned kind of a parody and rivalry games before. Based on like your experience in them, obviously in your years of coaching. What kind of added element does like a rivalry, especially one of like this magnitude of the eight bowl, what kind of role does that kind of play in any matchup? Well, I mean, you know, when it's in state, it's a big deal. Um, and, you know, people talk about it impacting recruiting, uh, which it can, you know, so, uh, and two new coaches, this is a, it's a big game. So we need to play really well. And then there, a quick follow up I had on that too. State sitting at two and five on the year, and obviously you've seen some of the struggles they've had and taking a little bit of a step forward against Georgia. Do you think they're better than a two and five team, better than uh, what their record says they are based on the tape you've seen on them? Well, I think it just depends on which game you watch. You know, um, sometimes, you know, just like the Georgia game, they could have won that game um, against a really good team on the road. Uh, you know, like I said, with a new quarterback that had. He not been eligible and medically cleared, you know. I think, you know, they ran the ball for eight yards, so uh, he made a big difference throwing for 400. Go back to Joe. Yeah, Coach. Uh, what stands out about the uh, Mississippi State defense? Um, seems like they're they've been the strongest two all year for MSU. Really keep them in games. What what kind of stands out to you when you look at them off the? Well, very unique scheme that gives you a lot of problems. I'm um, going back to San Diego State, and um, and they play really hard, you know. So obviously they got players that play hard and coaches that are getting out of them, um, you know, because you know they they play extremely violent up front. Back to Nick. Kind of the novelty this year of playing this game on a Saturday instead of the usual Thursday. Do you like the idea of going back to Thursday in the future, or do you kind of dislike the short week for a game like this? I, I don't know. I think it's the same for both teams. So. Um, I, I probably really don't have an opinion. I would guess, you know, Thursday gets more recruits watching you because, you know, less games. So I, I don't know. Go ahead, Nate. Coach, this is kind of a game that in the past has gotten a little heated at times. Have you talked to Coach Leach about anything like that or since you guys have taken the job or recently? I have not. Um, I don't think that's normally, you know, what you do. We've both got to manage our teams and, We'll talk a lot to our team as we get closer to the game about, you know, playing with great composure.